Hey guys, welcome to Janine's Gluten-Free Kitchen. Today we are making a gorgeous dish, a cold poached salmon. And we are serving it with a homemade horseradish and dill mayo, which I'll show you how to make also. We're gonna keep it nice and simple and serve it with some beautiful crunchy asparagus. I'm really looking forward to making that, so let's get cracking. <laughs> First thing we want to do guys is poach our salmon and I've got a really nice big um, pan, frying pan, it's a deep frying pan so we can get enough poaching liquid. I'm going to pop our gas on and I have one and a half litres of vegetable stock here. Now you can use fish stock equally, either is just fine. I wouldn't use crab, chicken or beef, just veggie or fish. I'm going to put our stock in there. Next thing we want to do while that's heating up, let me tell you about the other ingredients. I've got an onion and I've used a white onion so it doesn't brown the liquid too much. And we're just going to pop that in for a bit of flavour as well. What's really great flavour that goes with our salmon is some dill. Now, don't chop it up because then it's going to be really hard to get out. So I've just got some sprigs here that I'm just going to break in and keep it big enough that I'll be able to get it out easily when we're done. Okay. Next we want some peppercorns, whole peppercorns. Again, it makes it easier to get them out. I've just got a tablespoon, just going to dot it around. And if we use cracked pepper, it will make your salmon really messy. So stick to the peppercorns. You could use red peppercorns, you could use um, other coloured peppercorns. I think there's white as well. Either's fine. Uh, and then we have some celery. And we've just chopped that up into little sort of baton pieces. I'm going to throw them around as well. And I might wait to see if we've got space because I don't want to crowd my pan. So we've got our good ingredients there and we want to bring that to the boil. I'm going to put a lid on that to help speed up the boiling process. Now let me tell you about our fish because your fish is super important for this. You want something that is really fresh, very bright in colour, um, a really firm flesh. So make sure you go to a really reliable fishmonger and get yourself a side of fish. Now a side of salmon. You want between 1 to 1.3 kilos. Sometimes it's a bit hard to judge how much your fish side is. So when you buy it, you ask them to, measure, to weigh it for you. And when you get home, just cut it down so that it's a bit more manageable. I bought a huge piece and I had to cut it down quite a bit. So this is the piece I have now. And as you can see, oh, it's so firm and the color is beautiful. I've had the skin taken off because the skin kind of gets in the way when you're poaching. So uh, we've just got that whole cleaned piece and very important to have the pin bones down the center removed. You can ask your fishmonger to remove it. Alternatively, when you get it home, you can use tweezers and remove them yourself. So while we're waiting for our poaching liquid stock to boil, I'm going to get this pan heating up and we're going to blanch our asparagus in that. So blanched is, an, is a, another way of describing very lightly boiled. You're basically going to bring it to the boil, drop them in just for a minute or two, and then uh, it's done. And that way the asparagus stays nice and crispy and it retains its color and its vibrancy and its freshness. So we're gonna do that when it's boiled. Okay, back to our fish and we can see the liquid's just starting to boil and simmer. And what we're going to do is put our fish in. Perfect. 
Now, if when you want it to be submerged, so if there's any of the veggies getting in the way, just push them out the way. There we go, perfect. All right, now we're gonna reduce that because we only want it to simmer. If you do it too fast, it will make it tough. We don't want that. And then just pop the lid back on. It's gonna take about, it depends I guess how well done you like it. Some and ideally should be a little bit um, sort of medium texture, but if you prefer it well done, you might need a few more minutes. About 10 minutes is gonna give you a nice medium uh, cook. Uh, and then from there up to 15 minutes if you want it well done. Our water is boiling now. So we're just going to very gently Place our asparagus and poach them. Asparagus generally does not take long at all. Just a few minutes is all it needs. Let's have a quick look at our salmon. And you can see there's a nice little rolling simmer on the side there. And on each side. And the smell is so lovely. I can really smell the, uh, the spices and the peppercorns infusing into the fish and it's cooking beautifully. It's going to be very, very tender. Oh, goodness. Let's take our asparagus off. Now keep in mind with any blanched vegetable or boiled vegetable or steamed vegetable, while it's hot, it's going to keep cooking. So. What we're going to do is just refresh that under some cold water to stop the cooking process. While we're waiting for our fish, let's get cracking with the mayo. Alright. Got my trusty container here. Now if you've never made our one minute mayonnaise before, if you want to see it in more detail, there's the link and we go through how to make gar garlic aioli, um, lemon, citrus, herb, aioli and mayonnaise. So I'm going to make an, a horseradish. Now, the container is very, very important. It has to be nice and thin and tall. I have some dill that I've already chopped up. It's about a tablespoon of chopped dill. If you want it super flavorful, you can put in two. We've got some horseradish and I'm going to put a teaspoon of that because it's very strong. But we can taste it afterwards and see if we need more. I'm gonna start with half a lemon. And see how that works. Now my temperature on my fish, I can hear it simmering a bit too much. Turn that right down. There's our lemon juice. If you want some salt at this point would be when you add your salt. And then finally some good light olive oil. I prefer a light olive oil to our um, a full bodied virgin olive oil. It just gives a much milder taste. It's a bit it's sort of a sweeter taste. The virgin olive oil can be a little bit bitter, um, but it's, you know, personal preference. To make this beautiful mayo, you will need a stick mixer. You can use a bar mix or any other kind of stick mixer. It's so easy. Watch. Pop him down the bottom, turn it on, leave him down the bottom and then watch it come together as you slowly rise it. Look at that. Instant mayo. Yeah, that is going to be so good with the salmon. Look, if you can find fresh horseradish and grate it yourself, I recommend it. Nothing beats fresh. 
sorry about the noise. Okay, you can see after we've blanched our asparagus, it's so lovely and vibrant in colour. We haven't overdone it. Let's put that to the side while we check on our fish. Wow. So I'm just testing the firmness. The edges are starting to feel quite well done, but the center is still very springy, which means it's still a little bit pink inside, which is perfect, I think. When you poach fish, sometimes it sort of bleeds this kind of white frothy stuff. Just scrape that off. Slide one under one side and one under the other side because you don't want it to break. You want to keep it nice and intact. And don't worry about what's underneath the garden. Now we want that to just cool down for a little bit. We're just going to put it aside for five minutes. And when it's cooled down a little bit, we're going to pop it in the fridge. And we want to bring that down to a cold temperature. That's the idea, it's a cold poached salmon. So, put that over to one side. Our salmon is nicely cooled down now and you can see it's just, it's so juicy and so tender. I had a little taste of it before and it was, oh, so good. Oh, yum. The thing about poaching salmon, if you like me and you find that salmon can be quite strong and oily at times, poaching it is a perfect way to serve it because it sort of, um, it cooks it in a way that doesn't fry it. And so the flavor is much milder and the oils are released, but in a really kind of soft, delicate way, rather than when you fry it, it can get quite oily and rich. So this is just a great way to sort of tone it down. You're still getting all your essential fatty acids and the good fats from your salmon, but the, the mouthfeel is much milder and um, still really tasty. So that is just gorgeous and perfect. So let's plate that up for us. I'm just going to cut a serving size somewhere around there. And usually you can follow the lines of the fish. I've got a plate here. I'm going to put a few of our asparagus on there that we've cooked up earlier. And then I'm going to take my piece of salmon and just gently put it across. And then put some of our mayo that we just made on top. Don't be too stingy with the mayo, it just, it's so yum. <laughs> and finally we want to garnish it with some of that beautiful dill. Again, don't overdo it. Look at that. How yum is that? If you want something more substantial, by all means put another green vegetable or salad and a bigger piece of salmon but that is a beautiful piece of poached cold poached salmon with horseradish and dill mayo and blanched asparagus yummo let's put some lemon on the side ready to go Hope you've enjoyed that recipe. I have certainly enjoyed sharing it with you guys. Please hit the like and share it with all your family and friends. We're very keen to get our recipes out far and wide. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already because you will get notifications of our new videos as they come out. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope to see you next time. Please send us any requests for recipes and we will see you next time. See ya. And that's going to be served with a <laughs> so good. And then I'm saying
What was it that I'm saying? <laughs> Beautiful Atlantic salmon. And no, it's not Atlantic salmon. Ha, 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 ha.